Let's look at configuring a 1900 Catalyst switch. When we first log into the console port, using our uh, DB9 uh, and rollover adapter and our USB to RS-232 9-pin serial port adapter, this is the menu that we'll see. And I can select K to bring up the command line interface. And just like on a router, I can type the keyword enable to go from user mode into privilege mode. Notice how the prompt changes from the greater than symbol to a pound symbol. And then from privilege mode, I can go into global configuration mode with the command config T. Now here's where things start to get a little bit different from the way you would configure a router. There are two types of passwords we can configure on a 1900 switch. And they are the user mode and the privilege mode passwords. So to configure the user mode password, I would say enable and password. I'd specify a level, in this case one for user mode, and I can put in my password. And in the 1900, that password needs to be at least four characters and no more than eight characters to meet the complexity requirements for the password. Now, that's the user mode password. I can also specify a privilege mode password to create different levels of administrative access. And to do that, the syntax would be similar. Enable, and then password, level, and instead of one, 15, and then I can supply my administrative or privilege mode password. And then finally, if I want to get out, I can do exit. I can also do control Z, just like on a router. And then if I were to log in, I'll select K for the command line. Now it's going to prompt me for my user mode password, um, which was Kiwi. And that brings me into user mode. Now I have a limited level of functionality here, just like on a router. And if I want to go into uh, an administrative mode, in this case if I want to go to privilege mode, I'll supply my other password, which was Apple. And then that lets me into privileged mode. From privilege mode, we have you know several commands available for diagnostics and information gathering. For instance, there is a show running configuration, just like on a router. Notice here are my passwords. If I go down here are the ports that I have configured on the switch, uh, now, there is no um, startup configuration like you'd find on a router, just a running configuration. So hence, show run would be the only command I could use there. If I'm willing to go into global configuration mode with config T, I can set the host name of this switch just like I could of a router. Okay, and so in this case, we set the host name to Pegasus. Another thing I can do is set an IP address on the switch. Um, I don't have to select any particular port but I can specify that from global configuration mode with IP address. So IP address, and then let's say that I wanted to make this 199.207.13.5 uh, if I wanted to do that. And I'll supply a normal class C subnet mask. And just like on a router, if I had selected an interface, same command, same syntax and structure. And you know, this is not, a, it doesn't have a gateway of last resort, it's not a default gateway it's not a router so I can specify a default gateway which would be a router and to do that I can say IP default dash uh, gateway and then just specify the address of the gateway so 199 in my case 207 13 and 1 on my network and then let's look at that if we look at the running configuration now we'll look at the IP address of our switch and notice now it says here's the IP address 199 207 13 5 Class C subnet mask, and here's our default gateway. Now this is older hardware, and you might not find it on a lot of bleeding edge or cutting edge networks, but we'll still look at the differences between different models of switches. On the 1900, you'll have 12 ethernet ports running at 10 megabits per second. You'll also have two fast ethernet ports, designated as 26 and 27, that operate at 100 megabits per second. And you can use these for chunk links to other switches. Let's look at accessing those ports. Now let's log into the switch and select some ports. So again, from the console, I'll hit K for the command line. And I want to type in my password, Kiwi. And I want to go to privilege mode with the command enable and type in my password, Apple. And I want to go to global configuration mode. And in global configuration mode, I can use the interface command just like I would on a router. But instead of selecting a port for routing, I'm going to select a port on the switch. 
So for one of the Ethernet ports, I could do Ethernet, and then if I were to use the help system, the question mark, notice that my only options are slot zero. And there are no expansion ports or slots on a 1900 switch, so it's always going to be zero something. So in this case, if I wanted to select, let's say, port four, it would be zero, forward slash, and four on the switch. Notice the prompt will change from the global configuration mode via config T to the interface configuration mode where it says config dash if right here. Okay, and then now with that port selected, I can actually begin to configure things on that port. Let's say that I wanted to select one of my uh, two fast Ethernet ports. In this case, I'll go drop back down to global configuration mode so you can see what it would be like if you had just logged in. And I can do the same thing, only this time instead of Ethernet, I would use the interface command and specify fast Ethernet. And if I use the help system again with the question mark, notice my only options are slot 0, and of course that was either 26 or 27. So I could do 0, 26, and I would specify, in this case, port 26 on our 1900 Catalyst switch. If I want to, I can display information about a particular port with a show command. So from privilege mode, I could do show, and then specify interface if I wanted to, and then I could specify E, 0 for slot 0, and port 4 to show me what's going on on port 4. Notice the kinds of information I can get, very detailed information on each switch port. Another thing we could do is specify a descriptive string on the Catalyst 1900 switch just like we can on a router. To do that, I'd go to global configuration mode, I'd use the interface command to select, in this case, Ethernet and a port. So remember, my only choice is slot 0 and I'll select port 4. Once I do that, it's the same command description. The only difference is, unlike other models of switches and routers, you can't use spaces in the description string for the 1900 Catalyst switch. If you do, it won't understand the command and it'll give you a syntax error. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's connection to network blah. Now this will give us an error. I'll hit return. Notice it tells us invalid input detected at the caret marker. And that's because of the space there. So if I wanted to, I could just use an underscore. It's usually what you use on a 1900 Catalyst. You know, some of these are still in use, but connection to network net oh excuse me network 10 or something like that okay um, sort of the only difference there but I could do the same thing if I wanted to select a different interface that was Ethernet what if I wanted to select fast Ethernet so int Ethernet and slot 0 and again 26 would be my fast Ethernet port on the 1900 and to apply a descriptive string to it um, I'm just gonna say trunk link. And I'm going to go ahead and do control Z to go back to the beginning there. Now that I've done that, let's use some of our display commands. And first we'll look at the running configuration. And notice there's my IP address, my host name, my password. Notice here's my descriptive string for port 4. And then my fast ethernet port down here, the trunk link. Um, also, I could use the other show command, show interface, and specify a particular interface. So let's say E slot 0 port 4 on the switch, and bring up statistics in that way. And again, there's my descriptive string. Or for fast Ethernet, let me do F and slot 0 and 26. And again, there is also my descriptive string trunk underscore link minus the spaces because this particular model of switch remember doesn't support spaces one of the features you can set that is specific to the 1900 catalyst switch series is the duplex mode and if i want to set that i would go to global configuration mode i'd have to select an interface in this case i'll do port 26 which is the fast ethernet port so interface f slot 0 forward slash and 26 for the port number and then if I wanted to bring up the duplex mode, if I bring up the help system with a question mark, notice my options here, auto, full, full, flow, control, half, but I could simply do duplex and full, and then that would set it to full duplex mode. I'm gonna do control Z to drop back down into privileged mode, and I'm just gonna do show 
and interface and this time I'm going to do F 0 slot 0 forward slash and port 26 and if I do that notice duplex flow control setting says full duplex here any change you make to a 1900 catalyst switch is automatically copied to NVRAM there is no copy run start as you would have on a router so you may from time to time need to reset uh, or delete the NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM. So to do that, you can use the command from privilege mode of delete in NVRAM. And then reset system with factory defaults, we'll say yes. And then now if I select the command line, notice there are no passwords and all of my configuration changes are gone. So it's been reset to a factory default state. 